After the Brazilian Grand Prix, Red Bull engineers opened Max Verstappen's telemetry and what they found left them completely speechless. The data didn't just show speed, it showed something they had never seen before. Throttle inputs, brake pressure, steering precision every metric was perfect. Verstappen's driving wasn't human consistency, it was surgical mastery, the kind of performance that made even his own team stop and stare. How did he do it? How did Verstappen start from the pit lane, survive a puncture, overtake half the grid, and still deliver telemetry that defied Red Bull's own models? Stay right here because what Verstappen's telemetry revealed in Brazil wasn't just unexpected. It proved that Max Verstappen is no longer just driving the car, he's redefining what's possible behind the wheel of a Formula One machine. Interlagos The air was thick with humidity and pressure. Saturday had been a disaster Verstappen's car felt unpredictable, nervous, completely out of rhythm. His radio told the story, the car is dancing everywhere, mate. No grip at all. It wasn't an exaggeration, it was reality. The RB21, usually a precision weapon, had turned into something unrecognizable. When qualifying ended, Verstappen was out in Q1 on pure pace. For Red Bull, it was a nightmare. For Max, it was a challenge. That night, the team made a choice no one expected. They broke park firm and tore the car apart new Honda engine, new suspension geometry, and a completely rebalanced floor setup. It meant one thing, he would start from the pit lane. But for Verstappen, that wasn't punishment. It was liberation. He walked into the garage on Sunday morning calm, focused, and ready to do something extraordinary. When the lights went out, 20 cars rushed into the Senna S, Verstappen waited. He sat at the pit exit, helmet tilted slightly forward, waiting for the green signal. Then, the light turned. The RB21 launched like a bullet. Within the first two corners, the telemetry already showed it Verstappen's throttle application was flawless, perfectly balanced between traction and acceleration. No wheel spin, no overcorrection, no wasted motion. Every millisecond was deliberate. By lap 10, he was already inside the top 10. Every overtake Alonso, Gasly, Albon was a masterclass in control. Then, disaster struck. Lap 13, a front right puncture. But the telemetry didn't show panic. His steering inputs were smooth, his brake pressure steady. He brought the car back to the pits with the kind of composure that Red Bull later described as robotic. He rejoined last and started again. From that moment, Verstappen's telemetry told a story unlike any other. Each lap was faster, each movement more precise. His throttle trace looked like a clean waveform a perfect rhythm of speed and control. Red Bull's data engineers later confirmed that his steering corrections were the lowest of any driver all weekend. His braking points? Identical. Lap after lap. Turn after turn. The trouble started long before Sunday's lights went out. From the first lap of practice on Friday, Verstappen knew something was deeply wrong. The RB21 wasn't just off pace it was unpredictable, twitchy, and unstable in every corner. On the radio, his tone was sharp, analytical. I turn in, and the rear just breaks away. The car is not following the front. He wasn't guessing he was diagnosing. Verstappen's ability to translate feel into data has become legendary inside Red Bull, and this time his instincts were right. The car's balance metrics confirmed it, the floor was stalling under load, killing rear downforce mid-corner. Red Bull's engineers spent the night chasing stability through suspension tweaks and aerodynamic adjustments. Nothing worked. The telemetry remained chaotic erratic steering corrections, inconsistent brake pressures, spikes in energy recovery. The data looked like noise. By Saturday, Verstappen's discomfort had turned into disbelief. In qualifying, his inputs were clean, but the car refused to respond. Every corner exit showed traction loss, every braking zone showed oscillation. It wasn't driver error. The RB21's aero platform had simply collapsed. When the checkered flag fell on Q1, Verstappen was out 16th on the grid. No mechanical failure. No weather interference. Just a car that didn't belong on the same sheet as McLaren or Mercedes. 
For a driver who thrives on precision, it was like playing piano on broken keys. The telemetry confirmed what he already knew the RB21 was fighting itself. Inside the Red Bull garage, the silence was brutal. Lombiasi sat in front of the monitor, his jaw tight. Adrian Newey leaned over the data displays, scanning for logic in the chaos. The aerodynamic pressure ratios were wrong. The mechanical balance numbers were off by millimeters, but those millimeters meant seconds. They had misjudged the track's demands completely. Then came the meeting that changed everything. Verstappen walked into the engineer's office and didn't raise his voice. He just said, we break park firm. We change everything. If I'm starting at the back, give me a car I can fight with. It wasn't arrogance, it was leadership. And everyone in that room knew it. Red Bull made the call. They would rebuild the car overnight. A new Honda engine, new suspension geometry, and the trusted Austin spec floor. It was a move that meant starting from the pit lane but it also meant freedom. Freedom to give Verstappen the kind of machine he could master. By midnight, the telemetry feeds came back online. The numbers started to look normal again. Ride height balance stabilized. Aero load regains symmetry. The RB21 was reborn. When the lights went out in the Red Bull garage that night, the team was still working. Mechanics, engineers, and aerodynamicists moved in perfect rhythm, like a pit crew frozen in time. The RB21 was stripped down to its carbon core. The floor came off, the suspension was recalibrated, and a brand new Honda power unit was installed one that hadn't turned a wheel since it left the factory. It wasn't a repair. It was a resurrection. Every decision came down to precision. They lowered the rear ride height by millimeters to stabilize airflow through Interlagos's mid-speed corners. They adjusted anti-roll bar stiffness to correct the unpredictable weight transfer that had haunted Verstappen all weekend. The rear suspension geometry was realigned by hand a job so exact that one wrong turn of a wrench could ruin the setup. The telemetry from Saturday looked like noise. What they built that night was silence balance, harmony, perfection in motion. By dawn, the garage was quiet again. The RB21 stood gleaming under fluorescent light smoother, lower, meaner. When Verstappen arrived, he didn't ask for updates. He didn't need to. He trusted the team. His calm was unsettling the calm of someone who knows what's about to happen. He suited up, strapped in, and fired the engine. The deep growl of the new Honda power unit filled the garage, and the telemetry screen came to life. And then, Red Bull saw it clean, perfect data. Throttle traces were fluid. Steering corrections? Minimal. Brake pressure distribution? Almost symmetrical. The numbers didn't lie, the rebuild had worked. Verstappen's first outlap on Sunday morning was a confirmation of everything they'd done overnight. His inputs were steady, confident. Even in traffic, the car responded with precision. The RB21 wasn't fighting him anymore. It was listening. Then came the start. As the grid launched into turn one, Verstappen waited behind the pit lane barrier visor down, hands locked. When the green light flashed, he released the clutch, and the telemetry captured something Red Bull hadn't seen since 2023, a launch without traction loss. The throttle curve was smooth, rising in a perfect arc to 100%. No wheel spin. No correction. Just grip. Within 10 laps, he was already in the top 10. The telemetry coming from his car looked like something out of a simulator lap after lap of identical data. Even through turbulence, his brake modulation stayed within a 1% margin. Each apex was hit within centimeters. Engineers at the pit wall exchanged looks, half in awe, half disbelief. The numbers were real Verstappen's driving was measurable perfection. Then, lap 13 the puncture. The live data showed a sudden pressure drop in the front right. But what followed was almost eerie. No erratic spike in steering angle. No panic braking. His inputs didn't change. He simply compensated, guided the car back, and radioed in with the same composure, front right gone. Boxing now. When he rejoined, dead last, the data looked identical. 
the throttle curve, brake trace, steering arc all unchanged. For engineers, that kind of consistency is mythical. And in that moment, Red Bull realized they hadn't just fixed a car. They'd unleashed something entirely new, a version of Verstappen whose control could be seen not just on track, but in the raw numbers themselves. By lap 15, Red Bull's pit wall was staring at their screens in disbelief. Verstappen's telemetry wasn't just consistent, it was evolving. Every lap was faster, every corner more precise, and yet his tire degradation was almost non-existent. The engineers had never seen a curve like it. The expected drop in rear tire surface temperature after prolonged high-speed load simply wasn't happening. Instead, Verstappen was managing his tires with mathematical precision. The data showed perfect modulation of brake and throttle the kind of balance you expect from simulation, not reality. John Piero Lambiasi made the call, Max, we're switching to plan C. Three-stop strategy. Push flat out. Those words changed everything. Most teams were locked into two stops, managing pace and saving rubber. Red Bull went the other way full attack. Verstappen didn't argue, didn't hesitate. Copy. Let's do it, he said, voice calm, confident, already processing the new race in his head. The telemetry told the story before the commentators could. On the fresh mediums, Verstappen's corner entry speeds jumped by 5 km per hour. His apexes were perfect each one within a 5 cm variance, lap after lap. When he overtook Alonso into turn 4, the steering tray showed a flawless, unbroken arc, followed by a throttle pickup at 98% the ideal recovery point. It wasn't aggression. It was precision executed at full speed. By lap 30, Verstappen had cleared the midfield. The telemetry looked like a masterpiece zero wasted motion, zero spikes in brake temperature, and energy deployment curves that lined up perfectly with his race plan. He was managing the hybrid system manually, controlling ERS deployment in a way that confused even Red Bull strategists. When they checked the logs later, they realized he was using partial throttle liftoffs to charge the system more efficiently, without losing momentum. No one had told him to do it. He just figured it out mid-race.